And it's just gone 11 o'clock, which means it's time to start today's CBAA webinar, increase the functionality of your website. Hi, I'm Danny Chifley from the Community Broadcasting Association of Australia. Uh, thanks to all of our attendees here who are joining us via Zoom and are introducing themselves via the chat. I'm talking about Victoria from the Wellington Workers Association, listening all the way across from the Tasman. Thanks so much for joining us, Victoria. Uh, Alex from 4EB, 4EEB in uh, Brisbane. Alex is, of course, a past webinar presenter. So great to see him here on the other side of the computer screen. Uh, today's session, we're coming to you live from the CBAA offices in Sydney. So I'd like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land from which we're broadcasting, the Gadigal people of the Eora Nation. We, we pay respects to elders past, present and emerging. Today's session, increasing the functionality of your website. Of course, a great website lets you share content anywhere, anytime, whether it's highlighting past programs or promoting what you've got coming up. A great website can help you grow your audience online and attract subscribers and donations. We'll be learning about the radio website services and there's no better person to teach us about that than Andrew Morris, the manager of online products and services for the CBAA. And he'll be joined by a good friend of the sector who's assisted us in many capacities. And of course, we're with technology. Anthony Eden, software developer for Media Realm. Uh, thanks to both Andrew and Anthony for making themselves available to present as part of today's webinar. It is very, very, very much appreciated. Today's webinar, we're going to learn how radio website services can help broadcasting uh, help broadcasters manage your station website, promote online content through web, social media, and mobile devices, grow your audience online, and attract subscribers and donations. Um, I'm too far there. And so what I might do now is I will stop sharing my screen. I will throw it over to the wonderful Andy Morris and let you start doing your thing. Andy, you are on screen now, so I better stop talking and we'll get right to it. Thanks so much, Andrew. Great. Thanks, Danny. And thanks, Anthony, for joining us. Anthony is a broadcast engineer, software developer, and uh, web developer with Media Realm. And thanks so much for everyone joining us today live and taking the time out. We really appreciate that you've taken time out to learn about um, websites and how your radio station website can be the best it can be. And if you're watching on Catch Up, again, thank you. We appreciate your time and value that you are interested in this subject. Uh, coming up over the next half an hour, and we'll keep it to half an hour so we can answer your questions. Uh, we'll just talk about the six main areas that we believe, and there's probably more, but let's say six areas that you could focus on having a great website. So we're going to be looking at human-centered design. What's that? Well, it's really a useful, usable website that can work on multiple devices uh, across platforms. So uh, we'll look at that. We'll look at content, the types of content that a radio station should be having on their website. Uh, we'll also be looking at uh, building station revenue, uh, an important uh, aspect for all stations, whether that's donations, subscriptions, membership, uh, looking at sponsorship and marketing opportunities uh, for stations, and uh, also the ability to integrate uh, lots of different programs, whether that's a, a CRM, AMRAP pages, uh, an on-demand product, a streaming product, online gateways, all that kind of stuff. And finally, Maintenance and support. Yeah, the bugbear of all websites, maintaining your website and supporting it so it doesn't go offline. So Anthony, thanks for joining us. If you've got questions, uh, please feel free to uh, put them in the chat and we will get to them, but we'll keep it to uh, half an hour so we can get to Q&A. One thing I didn't mention, and I think it's probably key that we start off with that, is when you're doing a new website, really, it's what's your business goals? What's your business objectives? What are you trying to do with your website? It's going to be a combination of your objectives as a business. It may be to increase revenue or to stop taking checks in the mail for subscriptions or, or, or donations and transfer them to online. It might be championing the content that you broadcast 24 hours a day and making it easily available on the website. So they're business goals. It might be to um, sell sponsorship online and on air and give a combined package uh, for your sponsors. But then there's the user. What does the user want to do on, on your website? What are they after? Because most users, most listeners aren't going to just browse your website. They're actually going to your website for an intention, a specific task. It could be to download a membership form, to become a volunteer, maybe to look at your program guide, to listen to your stream, 
uh, to, to, to try and find information for that community announcement that was just broadcast. So they've got specific goals, specific tasks, and we want to make that as easy as possible. So over the last, oh gosh, let's say 10 years, to be generous, Anthony and I have been working together uh, at a Sydney radio station, Hope 1032, and over that time, probably more, we've thought about what is the ideal community radio website? What is the ideal radio website? What does it contain? And it's, it's the features that we've just spoken about and we'll go into more detail. And since we've been here at the CBAA, we've continued to say that. You know, what is a radio station, uh, what's a suitable radio station website for a small remote station and a Cap City station? And it's all to do with capacity and functionality. And so we've tried to build a site that answers your business goals, your objectives, and those of your listeners. Um, and we'll, we'll talk about it now. Anthony, just from that sort of intro piece, is there anything that you'd like to throw into the mix? Sorry, helps if I can unmute. Um, no, I, th I think you covered it really well. We've put a lot of thought, particularly over the last couple of years, um, but using our background at, at Hope and a couple of other stations to um, yeah, really focus on what um, stations need and what um, users want to get out of radio station websites. So hopefully we can unpack a little bit more of that um, throughout the webinar. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's I guess, as you said, Andrew, it's really important to just um, consider the user and consider the station and how you can um, balance the, the needs of um, both those groups through a website. Okay, cool. So in terms of business decisions and business goals, I mean, I think we've covered most of them. You, you, you probably want to promote your content. You want to, to take membership or donations to build your revenue for your station. And you want to promote your businesses and give them value as sponsors of your station. Uh, are there any other areas, Anthony, that a business that, that should be considered when uh, looking at business goals. I guess if you're going to set a goal, you need to measure it, don't you? Yeah, I mean, it's the whole smart goals thing, right? It needs to be actual, measurable, et cetera, et cetera. Um, yeah, so with, with any goal, you've, you've got to make sure that um, I guess there's um, a chance you can actually meet that goal. Um, and then you've got to work out how to, how to execute on that. And one way of seeing if you've achieved that is, and it's part of the CBAA uh, radio websites, is Google Analytics. So we can see... You know, how many people are visiting a page? How many people are listening to your stream? Uh, and, you know, if they're going to make a donation uh, to become a member or a subscriber or a supporter, financial supporter, do they make it the whole way through the donation process or where do they stop? And, you know, how can we improve that? So that's the measuring of your goals. Okay, so then we move on to, uh, I guess, the website itself. And so I'm going to start sharing the screen here of some of the websites that we've built. But we, we want to look at websites that in today's uh, environment, in 2021, um, need to be mobile friendly. They need to work on mobile devices. Basically, we're seeing most people engaging either through apps and through mobile devices. So you've really got to make sure it's working for mobile. Desktop's never going to go away. So that is obviously one key uh, feature that it, that it can work on multiple devices. And so the CBAA product that we've built and I'll start sharing is actually responsive. So what a responsive website means is uh, that it can fit the device size that you're using. So whether it's a desktop, whether it's uh, a mobile device or whether it's uh, a tablet, it will look reasonably well. It will look pretty good on all three. So at the moment we're looking at a desktop I'm just going to shrink my page here, not that far. Uh, but let's look at how this site adapts to uh, screen sizes. So we've got, um, we just pull it out here. We can see that it's fluid and it moves depending on the screen. And so what you're looking at here now is your mobile device. And so pictures. The, the bugbear of websites with uh, multiple devices these days are images and trying to get the image to fit on all three, all three screens is a challenge. But uh, yeah, the responsive is definitely the way to go. And so what we're looking at here is a responsive website working across platforms on mobile. Another key feature of your website, is it easy to navigate? Is it easy to use? And so uh, we're, what we're looking at here is clear navigation, uh, a hierarchy of things that you, that the main items that you want to, that your listeners want to access. And again, your business goals. So, I mean, we've got here the ability to donate. 
Yeah, it's a business goal, isn't it? And particularly at a fundraising time, it's something what your listeners really want to do. They want to support your station, so make it easy for them to support your station by putting it in a key area. Usability tests where people have been tested, thousands of people have been uh, given tasks to do, shows that the key areas for a website, the most important things for a business perspective or, or a user's perspective is in the top right area here and the top left area here. So you wanna be able to, to make it clear that you can make a donation here, you can search, you can listen to the station. And then there's other key business decisions you might wanna do here. And then making it easy to navigate the rest of the site. So what we're looking here is a mega menu and we're breaking it down into key areas. Listening being a key area for a radio station. I guess, Anthony, from your perspective, what are the key areas for a radio? What are the key functions or why people visit a radio station website these days? Yeah, I mean, a lot of it's obvious. So um, the majority of people still visit radio station websites to access um, the content that you've had on air, whether that being um, listening to a live stream, listening to on demand um, or catch up audio, um, listening to podcasts, um, seeing um, blogs and other content from your presenters, um, accessing um, a list of songs that you've played recently, uh, programs that are coming up, um a news that um, your journalists have been publishing all those sorts of things that kind of um, connect into your radio station somehow are the um uh, the key things that users are looking for on their websites um and that's balanced of course with some of your other business goals like um, promoting uh, sponsors um, that financially support your station and uh, providing means for people to donate and, and those sorts of things um, that, that might be a, a pretty obvious list of things that people want off their radio website, but w when you visit a lot of um, a lot of radio websites, I guess you don't necessarily see those items um, easily accessible or, or indeed on the site at all. The amount of radio websites I go to still where you can't easily find the stream button, um, it, it's it's quite surprising that we're still um, having that discussion in 2021. Yeah, streaming is a really key part of your website. You'll find that the two most visited pages of your website, and this is commercial radio and community radio, pretty much is your homepage and your stream or your podcast areas. And then there'll be other parts, but those two main pages are key pages. And you'll find that people are listening to your radio station while they're working. So the streaming, the, the most popular streaming hours are usually around from, you know, nine o'clock till six at night, and uh, then it drops off in the evening. But you'll find that a lot of at work listening takes place at your radio station. So on the RWS CBAA rep, uh, website, we, we do champion audio. And so we've got the ability to listen up in the top right. Uh, we've got down at the bottom a global player, which uh, you can see. You can, if you've got multiple stations, you can access those stations. So you've got, in this case, uh, 2NUR FM and Hunter News, which is their local news service. If you're a subscriber to NRN, you would have the NRN, NRN News Bulletin there. Or if you've got your own news service, we can punch your, your news service in there. And uh, it's basically catch up playing the bulletin that was previously played at the top of the hour. Uh, again, live information. Listeners love to know who's on air, who's coming up, and maybe the song details that are now playing. And now in 2021, there's so many ways you can actually capture that live dynamic metadata. So if you've got a playout system, whether it's uh, Wide Orbit or Radio DJ or Zeta, whatever it might be, um, it probably can connect uh, to the CBAA website. Anthony Eden's built uh, a plugin called Meta Radio and uh, that connects with a, a dozen automation playout systems, which, which means if you've got your song data in your song library, you'll be able to display it on, uh, on your website. But if you don't, there's a, this uh, great tool. If you know Shazam, well, Shazam is what we call automatic content recognition. And so basically it's a program that's listening to your stream and searching their database of songs and publishing that information and identifying the songs. So uh, in Alice Springs, our good friend Benjamin Aaron uh, has uh, got automatic content recognition working on his site. Uh, and so he, uh, a lot of the, his announcers come in with vinyl records and CDs. And so the automation play system is only half the equation. Automatic content recognition fills in the gap and it's, it's identifying all the songs, or pretty much 90, over 90% 90 of the songs being played 
are getting identified. And so it's a great tool. Uh, it's cost around $36 Australian a month uh, from uh, an overseas partner. Um, but uh, yeah, it's a great product and it has multiple purposes. And it's something that we're really excited about uh, for the future because in terms of AMRAP reporting, it gives you a great AMRAP report. It gives your listeners live now playing information and a song history. And also for your announcers, they don't have to fill out their playlists for through AMRAP pages all the time. It, it will do it for them. And we're, we're looking at integrating this in the future, no timeline. But what would be ideal is to have um, this automatic content recognition and then your announcers fill in the gaps on AMRAP pages. But that's another key audio tool that you can use on your websites this year and going forward. Of course, there's podcasting and on demand. And the great thing is, yeah, your stream can be easily connected into the website. If you've got on demand with say Nucleus or Omni Studio, it's easily integratable into your show pages and across your website. Uh, and we can talk about that. Or if you've got questions about on demand, we can talk about that later. Uh, the other area is podcasts and uh, the website. Anthony's just released a new feature on the website and that's the ability to, um, I guess, host podcasts through, the, through your website and also display it really nicely uh, on, on your website as a collection. And so I just want to show you the podcast landing page. Here we've got um, a nice, a really nice way of displaying your podcasts, uh, pitch, you know, the picture, the description, and as you link, uh, as you add your podcast to the different platforms, uh, you add them in the back end of the website and the logos will appear. And, and so your subscribers, your listeners can subscribe through Apple, Google, Spotify, through just an RSS feed or uh, access it through your website. So that's a really neat uh, feature that's just been added. The ability to host podcasts, small podcasts. If you're really serious into podcasting, I'd recommend that you use Omni or Nucleus. Uh, but um, for small amounts of uh, audio, this is a, a great, a great option. Okay, so the other exciting area is uh, in terms of content, and you want your website to champion content, not only audio, but Anthony, it's the written content, content as well. It's it's all about repurposing, and I guess we should address the big, the big. Uh, I guess the big thing in the room, which is capacity. If you're a Cap City station or you have a lot of volunteers at your radio station, you may have the capacity to empower them to help manage the website, to add content um, and write content. Uh, if, you're, if you're a smaller station with a limited number of volunteers, well, I guess it's, it's being able to say, well, this is what we can do. And then this website gives you the flex flexibility to turn on and off functionality. So just use what you can use. But uh, one of the things is written content and I guess repurposing content that goes to air, that, that key interview with a musician. If you can, get your presenter to write up a short story and publish it on the website with the interview. Anthony, written content's gold, isn't it? Yeah, I, I mean, if you think about um, how people discover um, your website, whether you're talking about social media posts or um, Google search or those sorts of mechanisms, uh, written content written, written content is really key um, to making sure you do well on those platforms. Um, Google for a long time now has um, valued um, uh, really lengthy pages with lots of content, lots of rich content. Um, and it, it helps increase, um, I guess, the searchability um, as well as the engagement um, on your site. So trying to pair your audio content with fantastic written content is something you should really look into if you've got the capacity as a station um, to be able to do that. Yeah. And uh, an exciting thing that we're working on with uh, the current affairs program called The Wire which is brought out of 4EB and sorry, I'll say Radio Adelaide, I think, 4EB and 2SCR in Sydney and Bay FM up in Northern New South Wales uh, contribute to The Wire is that The Wire will be pushing stories to um, the other RWS websites very shortly. And so I can show you an example of that. So this is a case of you might not have the capacity to produce content on a daily basis, but the great thing is uh, teaming up with uh, organizations and, and journalists like The Wire will be able to push content to your website 
on a daily basis. So what does that look like? Let's go to the homepage of this demo site and just see what you possibly could get. So it's in demo at the moment. So, but what th these are basically stories here being pushed out. So today's stories was uh, the news from uh, Canberra and Parliament House. Also um, a, a challenge on Craig Kelly in New South Wales, his seat. So it's about three stories a day and you'll get the audio from that story. As you can see, picture and uh, the written content. And uh, yeah, so this is what's going to be coming to your site, thanks to the WIRE team. Uh, and a great way to engage your listeners and to and for your announcers actually to promote it on air during their shifts. You know, you go uh, in the news today, such and such, uh, you can check it out at our website right here. And it's a great way of, of driving engagement with your, your listeners. So that's coming out in the next month or so and uh, an exciting function of the CBAA radio station website. Um, okay, just looking at that and we're also... Uh, that that gets, I guess that goes on to you know inviting and looking out for guest bloggers in your community. With the, the decline of local newspapers, there's a great gap here for, for radio stations around the country to invite former journalists for the local paper to actually contribute stories to your radio station website and add that daily content. So inviting either subject matter experts to write articles on different topics and you're giving them a, a platform to promote it and again, it's the whole tie-in. You talk about it on air, promote it to the website. Talk it on air, share it on your socials, share it on your website. It's a nice big loop and, and it really creates a lot of energy within the radio station and drives your listeners deeper, deep, more deeply engaged with your station. So, you know, when it comes to subscription time or donation time and you say support station XYZ, they go, oh, I'd love to support your station. You've given me so much. You connect me with my local community. And I love the content that you're giving us each day. So there's a good reason to engage your listeners with great content, give them something that they want, and they'll, they'll be there, they'll, they'll love it, they'll appreciate it, and they'll support you when you need help uh, to fill out your budget at the, uh, towards the middle of the end of the year. Okay, uh, another area, Anthony, I guess, is uh, to, to look at is uh, community events calendars and community notice boards, a great way to engage your local community on air and then send them online to find out more information about the, the local events in your area. So we've built the community notice board and it's a great, it's, it's a great feature, easy to maintain. It can be draft uh, and, and also you can invite your listeners and community groups to go online and add their event. What was the, re what was the thinking behind community notice board and the community directory, Anthony? Well, I mean, a lot of stations run CSAs and, and um, regular updates on air around things happening in the community. So this is a really fantastic way to be able to um, share that content on your website. And indeed, it's um, you've only got so many um, opportunities on air to share these things, but you've got basically unlimited opportunity on your website. Um, so yeah, the, the community events directory or the notice board or whatever you want to call it um, is a great way for listeners to submit their event. Um, they can fill out all the fields, attach the details. Um, it will send an email notification to whoever's responsible at your station for moderating um, those submissions. And then it's basically just a couple of buttons you have to click to um, approve it to display on your website. Um, so this has uh, even been a great feature to help presenters when they're um, looking for content to um, share on their website, uh, share on air, sorry, um, because they can jump on the website, see all the events that are coming up, um, sort it by category um, to find something relevant and then be able to talk about that um, on air. And it's a great time for sponsorship as well. If you're looking for something to, to sponsor, uh, you know, once an hour on air, maybe 10 to the hour, you know, uh, taking a look at today's notice board, thanks to station sponsor XYZ and Mum's Cottage meditation classes are on again this coming Thursday. Uh, it's going to be happening uh, at, you know, Hind Street in West Walls End. Uh, great, great time to relax, blah, blah, blah. Uh, find all the details at our website. Um, and so it's a great sponsorship opportunity as well uh, and something additional to sell, which leads us on to after looking at all the opportunities you've got for content and, and promoting content that's engaging for your listeners is how do I monetize the website and can I monetize the website and can, how can I build revenue for the station? 
And, and, and that's a key part of the, the CBAA radio station website template. Um, again, um, uh, in many cases, uh, you're a station that takes donations or subscribers. We, in this case, call it Donate. But what we've called it, uh, you can rename it. But we've, uh, we've learned over the years how to, to optimize a donation page. So there's not a lot of friction in, in, in the way that you give uh, to your organization, uh, to, to your favorite radio station. And I'll just pull up uh, a donation page here. Anthony, do you want to talk us about the donation page and, and just the principles behind, uh, I guess, whether it's a subscriber donation page or a donation page, um, just, yeah, what makes a great donation page? Yeah, so um, donation pages is something that I've personally spent a lot of time working on for a lot of different not-for-profits. So um, it was a good opportunity to take a lot of those learnings and um, build it into these radio websites. Um, so, I mean, the, the primary thing that makes a donation page work is um, ease of use, really. You want it to be as frictionless as possible. Um, you don't want to be sending people off through multiple pages, multiple steps, multiple forms, giving them confusing error messages, et cetera, et cetera. You want to have a really, really simple flow um, that allows people to, to quickly and easily and confidently donate. So we've designed this page um, so that you can have the option for giving once off or uh, giving a recurring monthly gift. Um, we've built it so that you can um, predefine amounts. So you can say, um, uh, we think $30 a month is a really common um, uh, amount. So we'll put that in as, a, as an option or $500 once off might be a popular amount. So we put that in as an option and you can configure these as Andrew's demonstrating, it's all configurable. Um, but yeah, essentially we've created this, um, this flow that um, kind of uh, brings in a lot of best practices and makes it really easy and frictionless for your users to be able to donate. Um, it ties in with um, some of the um, bigger um, payment gateways um, that are around. So Stripe, um, many of you might have heard of Stripe. It, it's a really popular, um, very, very secure, very robust um, online um, uh, payment gateway. Um, so we support that. Um, and that supports the, the full options with once off and monthly giving. Um, and then there's also um, Secure Pay and eWay, which are a little less popular, but still um, fairly popular in Australia. Um, and, and those are supported as well. Um, so yeah, we, we've built this, it's very configurable. There's some options so you can um, uh, set up a subscriber uh, or membership type um, arrangements as well. Um, you can put in um, your different um, subscriber or membership levels um, and configure those so users can, can select um, the appropriate level for them. Um, or you can just use it as a, a donation um, form as well. Uh, yeah, so there's a few options there um, to, to try and um, make it work for the widest variety of stations possible. Yeah, and you don't have to be uh, a tax deductible uh, station either. You can just uh, be able to be a charity and take donations. And again, you can use this for membership uh, or subscribers as well. So there's a lot of flexibility. If you've got lots of multiple different kinds of uh, needs in terms of a donation or different giving levels, we do have a form builder on the website which can enable and give you more flexibility um, but so there's multiple ways you can take online donations or subscriptions or membership uh, payments either through this uh, hard-coded tailored um, solution or through our gravity forms plugin that's uh, another alternative way of doing it but a really important way if you if you're not taking online donations this is a great way uh, to have the money in the bank because you, you can say oh, pledge this amount yeah, that, that pledge might never come in, but if you can get your supporters the credit card details and prompt them an, an amount, an, an amount that is reasonable, maybe an, an amount that can just, you know, they love the station, they're prepared to give a little bit more. And then for, for your listeners who have got the capacity to give a larger amount, uh, you'll, you'll find that your revenue, particularly donations and subscriber uh, payments will, will increase over time. It's a great tool and definitely worth uh, having on your website. Uh, so yeah, so that 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 is uh, pretty much it. We also do have merchandise. If you've got t-shirts and cups, we have a very simple e-commerce solution. Uh, if you're if you're into selling massive amounts of stuff, maybe not for you, 
But if you, if you want to do a simple merchandise sale of t-shirts and cups and other bits and pieces, then there is that solution. Now, there is an increasing number of stations wanting to use CRM, or customer relationship management tools, uh, for, for, uh, as part of their radio station. It's, it's a great, great idea to have a CRM. At the moment, uh, our website doesn't have a CRM built into it. Uh, that is very technically challenging to do, but we do connect to Profiler, which is used widely across the country for not-for-profits. And uh, we're looking at different CRMs over the next months that we can recommend uh, as a possible uh, CRM, but we're only in the research stage at the moment. So we'll keep you informed as to that. But uh, that's a that's a term that's a longer term project for this year to find a CRM or a couple of CRMs that could be suitable for community stations. All right, so let's keep going because I'm conscious of time and there are lots of questions. So we want to get to that um, sponsorship and marketing. So let's look at that. Uh, we've created a number of different opportunities for you to promote your sponsors on the website. So let's just take a look at a few of them. So we've got a sponsors directory, which is a cool thing which you can uh, give to your sponsors uh, once they become uh, an on-air on, on client, add them to your directory. Uh, and a simple way is to a logo, the business name, description of the business, the website, pretty straightforward, but sponsors love that stuff. They love supporting a station and they love visibility on your website. And then you can create the categories here and search by different category groups. That's an easy win. Uh, and something that you can give away for your sponsors as an add-on when you're doing a sponsorship deal. The other thing is banner advertising. And we have IAB, which is the uh, Internet Advertising Bureau's standard banner ads across the site. So that's an example of the banner ad there. We've got medium rectangles and uh, leaderboard banners. So it's something that you can use for in-house promotion and also um, you can use it for your clients, maybe uh, sell it as part of your package, or you might want to sell it as a separate option as well. So that's an example there of the University of Newcastle's um, promoting Snooze Homemaker, uh, Homemaker Center. Then we've got a sponsor, uh, basically a sponsor bank. So there's three different ways, sponsors directory, banner advertising, and what we call here, which is just a sponsor band where you can say, thanks to our sponsors, blah, blah, blah. And every time uh, that page refreshes, you'll have different sponsors on that page. Okay, two more areas, Anthony. Integration. So I think these days you need a website and I guess we should talk about CMSs. We're using WordPress as a CMS. It's used by over 33% of all websites around the world. 33% of the world uses WordPress. So there is a massive community of people who are doing things, building things, trying to figure out and work with WordPress. It's, a, it's an active, vibrant community. There's other things like Drupal and Embraco and other custom CMSs. But I mean, from our experience, you know, if you're, if you're a station person and you want to update something, I think WordPress is definitely the easiest way to update content and not to be dependent on a web developer to build something, to build functionality for you because it's going to cost a fortune. Uh, you know, back in the day, we would have spent $60,000 on a radio station website that has all this functionality. We've spent a considerable amount designing this, but a community station can buy this for $2,400. So, it's, it's a great opportunity uh, for community stations around the country to get access to functionality that a couple of years ago was beyond most stations. Uh, so yeah, WordPress is a great tool and I'd highly recommend, even if you don't go with CBAA, if you were to go somewhere else, consider WordPress just because of ease of updating and not relying on your developers all the time to have to build content for you, which will, tune, will, will turn out to be quite expensive. Is that fair enough, Anthony? Yeah, we've we've found WordPress is an incredibly um, volunteer friendly platform. Once you've got it up and running, um, it's very, very easy to go in and add and edit content and make sure that your website is nice and fresh. Um, we run training sessions for, for people who are um, being onboarded onto this platform to help them um, get, a, get up and running and um, get their volunteers trained and start getting confident in the system. 
Um, but absolutely, WordPress is one of the most popular um, CRMs out there, and there's a good reason for it. It is very extensible. It is very easy to use. Um, it, it does tick a lot of boxes. Yeah, and and the 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 the, the great. Uh, the great thing with WordPress now, it, it, it's modular, it's blocks. So you, if you want to create a story or a, a content on a page, it's just choosing an image, choosing uh, some headings, choosing a, a YouTube clip, and it's just dragging things in. And it's a very easy way to create a page these days. And so really it comes down to, I guess, having that idea of how you want your page to look and then just understanding what options you have at your fingertips to create that page. Um, okay, so in terms of integration, we've spoken about it earlier. Obviously, audio, you can connect with on-demand services like Omni, Nucleus, with your streaming provider. Uh, you can connect with your radio station automation playout system. You can connect with Google Analytics easily, Facebook Pixel easily if you do want to remarket. Uh, as Anthony mentioned before, connecting to payment gateways to enable online donations. We've got three, eWay, Secure Pay, and Stripe, very easy. AMRAP pages, easy to connect to for uh, your show pages and stuff. Uh, there's a lot of different integration uh, that we, we can do. Um, as I said, for CRM, it connects with Profiler quite easily. And then we've got e-newsletters. And e-newsletters are an important part of the whole circular picture because you're promoting your website on air, that you've done a great interview. You drive them to the website, they read the interview, you then say, hey, we can send you more information about what happened at, at our radio station during the week, sign up to our newsletter. And so we can connect you to MailChimp, MailerLite and Campaign Monitor. And they're three great services. Uh, you can all have, uh, they're all got free plans. So you don't actually have to spend money on any, any of those platforms. And then we also integrate with a social media aggregation wall called Curator, which is basically a great example. It's I'll see if it's down here. That's Curator. It basically brings in your social media uh, posts, whether it's Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn, all into one place. And you've got uh, different ways you can display that content. ACCC is showing you in squares, but that's a great tool. If, if you're updating content regularly on social media and, and don't have the capacity to do stories on your website, this is a great compromise where you can bring in content uh, onto your website that's refreshing on a regular basis. So yeah, in terms of um, integration, there's a lot of integration. I probably did miss something there, but we did talk about the wire as well and NRN news, which can integrate into your website. So anything, uh, Meta Radio, I guess, which is its own beast in itself, uh, which uh, we can direct you to Anthony's website, which is free when you get the website with the CBAA. Anthony, is there anything else that I didn't mention there? No, I, I think you I think you listed all the main ones. It's also worth mentioning um, that there's inbuilt program guide um, functionality, so you can set up your program guide uh, yep. within the site, uh, or you can import that from MRAP pages, as you mentioned, Andrew. Um, and it's worth mentioning that um, the uh, song uh, metadata we can pull that in from I think it's 19 different. Um, radio automation systems. So there's a good chance that if you've got an automation system, um, we'll be able to support bringing the data in um, from there into the websites um, and giving you some history and um, showing you what's currently playing and doing all those good things. So this is the song history. You can go back in time and find out what was played at a particular time of the day, uh, a great tool. And I know uh, the University of Newcastle has uh, an Apple connection, so you can buy content from Apple there as well, but which they've put onto their song history page. Uh, okay, so I think we'll wrap it up because I've actually we've gone longer and I appreciate you, uh, you hanging in there and listening. I hope it's been of, uh, of benefit. It's given you a clear understanding of what's potentially available to you uh, and to your radio station website. And what you've seen over the last 40, 40 minutes is what the CBAA radio website product can give you. Uh, the final thing is support and maintenance. We host and support uh, the websites. Uh, so when you buy a product, it has to be hosted with us. And that's uh, very much around ensuring the website is up to date, is secure, looks good, is always online. We give, uh, we're able to, able to recover if, if something was to happen, we can do a recovery from the night before. But uh, yeah, so 
uh, happy to talk about the product. If you're, in, I'll just say it now that it's twenty four hundred dollars. It's fifteen hundred dollars for the build, and then uh, it's fifty dollars a month hosting for a minimum of around eighteen months, and we'll support with updates every month and uh, add new features as we've been doing over the last twelve months. And uh, yeah, hope you uh, hope you like it, and um, happy to answer questions. Excellent, and that's when I'll jump on in. Thanks so much to. Uh... Anthony and Andy for that. That's wonderful stuff. Um, I'll just go through. There's a few questions that have uh, come through. Thanks to so much, uh, so much to everyone for getting involved. Um, uh, Gavin Ivney, Ivy was able to the references to Omni. He was able to find the correct Omni that we we're referring to there. It's O M N Y. Um, I will send through a link for that to everyone via the follow up correspondence, so you can check it out yourself. Uh, Belinda Ritchie uh, from Gippsland uh, noticed that the payment. When we were looking at the payment page, it was listed in uh, US dollars. That can be changed to Australian dollars, can it, gents? Yeah. Yeah. No, the, the demo site, Excellent. we've just left it on US by accident. So all the sites we roll out are Australian dollars. Beautiful. Um, the uh, Brad from Radio Blue Mountains asks, how does the show scheduling engine work? They're using On Air 2, uh, but all their other sites are Divi. We prefer something like that, or even if something would combine with Divi. Now that's a that's a lot of slang and jargon there. I'm hoping it means something. So I, I might jump in um, on that one. So our websites are sold as a package that we host to maintain. Um, so we don't use the Divi page builder. Um, we use um, the WordPress Gutenberg block editor. Um, and we've got a, a bunch of custom blocks that are um, designed and built in that. So it's really, really easy to create all the layouts that we were um, showing during the demo today. Um, the program guide, uh, as I think we mentioned briefly, um, is through a WordPress plugin called MetaRadio, which I just also happened to build. Um, so that's included with the sites um, and it will um, allow you to either manually enter the program guide in and then it will give you all those great layouts um, that we showed, or you can import the program guide from AMRAP pages and it will keep that up to date. Um, and it will lay it out in exactly the same way. Um, you, you really have the same functionality either way there. Um, so if you're talking about building your own sites with Divi, um, then uh, this might not be the product for you, um, but uh, I encourage you to check out what we do offer. Um, because there is a, a ton of functionality in there. Um, and as I said, it's all in the WordPress block editor. Excellent. Brad's just sort of had a live response to that one. His first question was, is the webinar available after? Brad, it is indeed a recording of this will be sent out uh, to everyone via the email and it will be hosted on the CBAA website. Indeed, all of our previous webinars are available on the CBAA website. You can hear what my voice sounded like in 2016. Uh, Meta Radio, is it available as a separate plugin? Uh, yes, it is available as a standalone uh, WordPress plugin. Um, if you're looking at that, um, you can jump on my website um, and there's a demo available for you to download. Excellent. Um, both Benjamin and Aaron uh, via the webinar room. He was happy to see 8CCC shown as a great example of how stations are taking a great webinar and filling it with great content. And uh, Nia McMartin from KC Radio had a similar reaction to watching the webinar live on the Facebook live stream. Uh, Danny, I just wanted um, to say, yeah, thanks to, to Nia and, and Benjamin. They're two stations from 8CCC and KC Radio who are using this, the platform. And uh, the CBAA, and I guess we're in a stage uh, just in media generally where there's a lot of change uh, happening um, with Netflix and Disney and Binge. Uh, they've taught us to consume media in a different way uh, and expect, and now consumers expect to consume media in a different way. So it's very much on any device, whether it's a smart speaker, uh, an app, a, a mobile phone, um, and also at the time that they want to choose. So time shifted audio, time shift, doing it at a time that they want to do it. So there's a big shift taking place. And so the CBAA are very cons uh, conscious of the fact that, um, that that's taking place. And so we're rolling out what's multi, uh, called a multi-platform project, which is ensuring that stations can be heard uh, on any device at any time that listeners want to engage. So we're working with some technology companies with smart speaker skills for every station in the sector, a community radio app, which will be released in the second half of this year, where every station in the sector can be listened to through this community radio app. And each station will have a show page. 
and uh, a lot of metadata about each station as well. And they'll be podcasting and on demand on that, that platform as well. And there's a lot of other work and that includes the work we're doing with Omni for on demand and streaming with Triton Digital, uh, offering high quality streams uh, with a with a company that's a global leader in audio, which also gives you metrics that are that are very detailed, so you can understand who who is listening to your uh, streams and podcasts and audio on demand and how they're consuming it and where they're consuming it. So you can then go, well, this program doesn't work. This program does work. We should do more of that as well. So it gives you insights into what your consumers like as well. Um, I just wanted to say, Victoria yeah. asked a question about YouTube about video. So we don't upload video onto our website that would totally drown us with uh, data but we would recommend that you use YouTube as your place where you hold audio and you embed your YouTube videos into the WordPress site which is very easy to do there's a WordPress plugin so it's dead easy Excellent. Thanks so much. I'm glad that you saw uh, Victoria's question there on the question and answer. Uh, when you were talking about all the projects that you've got happening later on this year, Gavin Ivey from Curry Radio asks, will it be similar to Indigitube but for all community broadcasters? Uh, so we would have been referring to the uh, visual component there or possibly the app. Yeah. So the, the concept of the community media app is that um, you can listen to every station in the sector and that it will be geolocation. So if I'm in uh, Outback New South Wales or Outback Queensland, I open the app, it will tell me the local station nearest me going out to say a 50 kilometer radius. Um, and then if I'm in Sydney, I'm outside the CBAA, it will tell me FBI is my closest station, Koori Radio is there, 2SCR is there. Um, so yeah, so that will have that side streaming. And then uh, we will, uh, do on demand for stations that have got on demand programs that want to contribute it to the app, then we'll be publishing um, on demand programs from across the sector and also podcasts from the sector. And uh, there'll be personalization. So if you can think of an, an app, maybe not as advanced as ABC Listen, because they've been working it for a long time, but that ABC Listen experience is what we want to do for the CBAA and for community radio. Beautiful stuff. And I think the only other question I've got here is outstanding is Lee from uh, Highland FM asked about community events. I, that that um, was a specific uh, question about the expiry date and removing it. So the way community uh, uh, notice board works is that you tell it when it's the events on and when the event finishes, it should disappear. Uh, like all websites, we, we, it's a continuing thing. And I think Anthony, that bug has been fixed. If yeah, it's, it's rolling out this week. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, so what you'll find with, with any web developer, including us, is bugs will always be there and we work on fixing those bugs as quickly as possible. Uh, but that is the nature of web design and software development and um, you're always fixing things, things always break. And so um, it's something's not working, you tell us and we get to it as quickly as we can. And judging by those flagship video games that are being released this year, you don't have enough bugs in the software you're releasing. So we'll try and put more in there. Yeah, yeah, put more in so you can increase engagement with people afterwards. Um, I think I've gotten through all the questions here. If I have missed anything, please just uh, yell at us, someone, or yell at us via the chat box, if you wouldn't mind. Uh, just take the time out again to say thank you to both um, Anthony and Andy for taking their time today to have a chat. Um, they are easily contactable. Um, their details will be made available and links to all of the work that they're doing will be included as part of the follow-up. Um, when you do sort of log out of today's webinar, the Zoom page when you joined us will have transformed into a webinar feedback form. Your feedback is very, very important to us. It helps us shape the future of the webinars and indeed any of the learning that the CBAA offers the sector. So be sure to get involved uh, in that. Um, but just a lot of uh, thank yous coming through. So with that, I might sort of, unless there's any final thoughts there, gentlemen, we'll be able to call it quits for the day. Uh, I was just going to say community radio is in a very interesting place at the moment. We've got lots of potential to get our content out to many listeners across the country. I think the next few years is going to be very exciting for, for the sector. Awesome. Thanks so much, everyone. Thanks very much, everyone, for attending uh, CBAA webinars. News about all our upcoming webinars will be sent to you via email very, very soon. In the meantime, have a wonderful day. We'll talk to you all very, very soon. Bye now.